Welcome back to the Connect for Windows SDK Quick Starts. Uh, this video is working with depth data. So in our last video, we talked about the camera fundamentals. Uh, the things you should have taken away from that is we have a runtime object, we tell it what kind of image to use, use color, use depth, we sign up for an event, whether it's a depth frame ready or video frame ready, we open the streams, we get in that uh, um, event that's going to fire around 30 frames per second. We need we get uh, the raw data for the image, and we need to build that image. So in this one, we're going to talk about how we build a depth image and th the data that's actually coming back um, from the depth frame. Um, so just to recap, the data when we have that event, it's an image frame that's coming back, includes the frame number and a number of different properties. And then the planar image has the, has the actual data. So the difference here is the video frame has uh, the actual contents of, of the video, say like a snapshot of an image, inside the bits byte array. The depth data actually has more than that. It, ha it doesn't have the actual data of the image. It has distance data. And we're going to walk through that in this session and show you how you can use that distance data to create your own images. So uh, remember, this is image frame .image bits. It's an array uh, of bytes. And the way the array is structured is that it starts at the top left of the image, and then moves left to right in rows, if you will, then top to bottom. And basically, it's a representation of a distance for pixel. In our very first video, we talked about how there's a connect projector and a connect sensor. The projector is projecting infrared. The sensor is determining how long it took that infrared data to bounce back and determining the distance for each pixel. So that's at a, at a very high level uh, what's going on and how the array of data is structured. So we have distance data inside that, that bits array, not, not red, green, blue data. That's what we're actually going to build based on that distance data. So how is this stored? So it's in two bytes per pixel, so 16 bits total. Um, now, there's actually a different formula depending on which uh, type of image you, sign, uh, uh, you set up the runtime option for. If you set up the runtime option for depth, you bit shift the second byte by 8. Um, and if you sign up for depth and player index, you're going to do different formulas. So for the first one, second byte by 8, if we wanted to get the distance of the point at 0, 0, we pass in, um, or we use a bit shifting formula of bit for bit 0, which represents the, the first byte, and then bits 1, and then we bit shift that uh, second byte by 8, and that gives us the distance in millimeters um, for that particular, for 0, 0, I now know the distance um, from the connect sensor. Now, when you're talking about depth and player index, what we're actually doing is actually adding uh, the skeletal information in here. So it includes the player index, which is, hey, I know that this particular point represents a player index. So what we're doing is we have a different formula. Uh, we bit shift the first byte, bit 0. For 0, 0, we bit shift um, uh, the uh, by 3 the first byte because that contains the data for what, what the player index is. And then 5, the second byte. And the specific formula is below. So I uh, just realized that to get the distance for 0, 0, it depends on whether you're using depth and depth and player index. And the depth and player index actually includes the player index data. So that's the actual formula. So uh, for reference purposes, a range can exist from about 850 millimeters to 4,000 millimeters in terms of total distance. The closer you get, it's just going to tell you 850 uh, millimeters as the minimum distance, if you will. Now, sometimes you'll get a depth value of zero, and that means unknown, meaning shadows, low reflectivity, high reflectivity, among the few reasons. But there's a number of reasons you may actually get a zero for um, a depth value. Now, the player index that, uh, if you're using the depth and player index, you have three possible values. Zero, I don't, this, this particular pixel is not an actual player. Or uh, this particular pixel, a player index of one, represents the first skeleton, or skeleton zero. A player index of two represents skeleton one, because it's zero based array. Skeleton zero is player index one. OK, so that is our uh, high level depth reference. Let's jump into code 
and show um, what we can do using that byte array and, and deciding how we want to color it. So in this case, again, back to um, setting up the development environment video, we have a window loaded, uh, unloaded event, um, we have a runtime, and in this case, uh, let me just full screen this and we'll start walking through our demos. So in window loaded, we have, let me just up the font size here, use depth and player index. So we want to get that uh, player index data back. We're going to use skeletal tracking as well so we can get the player index. We register for the event like we did before. And we open the event, uh, we open the depth stream with a 320 by, returning a 320 by 240 image. So when this depth frame ready value comes back, we could have used the coding for fun library to just display the, the monochrome histogram. But instead what we want to do is actually generate our own um, we're going to generate our own uh, set a uh, byte array that represents colors. So we are going to pass in the image frame and do that. So let's just jump to this method. So what we do is you give me an image frame and I'm going to return to you an array of uh, a byte array that represents the colors in a specific format. And that format will be uh, blue, green, red, but we'll talk about it. So. Um, we have the height and width data for the image. And now this is the depth data. So this is the byte, byte array that we were talking about where every pixel, 0, 0, has a specific distance from the connect sensor, 850 to 4,000. So um, what we want to do, though, is, is basically loop through this data. And we'll talk about how we're going to loop through it in just a second. But we also need a container for when we're actually building the color frame. Um, so the way this works is we're going to multiply the height times the width times 4. So for every uh, pixel, every pixel has a height, a width, location, so 0, 0, and then a representation of red, green, blue, and an empty byte at the end. Uh, and that's because we're using, that's just the format of the BGR32. Uh, if we did want to use transparency data, we could use BGRA and just realize um, that you have to set the transparency because .NET defaults a byte to zero, which would be fully transparent and you won't see anything and you'll be wondering what you can do. So, uh, and really just to take a step back before we get into actually building ours, just realize the, the reason we're doing this is we have depth data, now we can do something interesting based on that depth data. So we can choose how we're going to colorize this picture based on its depth. So um, uh, I'm going to show you just uh, the, the basics, uh, one basic me mechanism to do that, just using three if statements. Um, and you can, of course, make yours much more complex or make it scale or, or whatever you want to. But just realize the point is we have distance data for every pixel. How do we then want to choose the colors based on that distance value? Um, and it could be distance plus height, distance plus width, where you can imagine something doing like starting from a light shade to a dark shade at the bottom. Whatever it happens to be, uh, the point is you can build your um, colors. Okay. So for a specific BGR format, uh, they have an index, uh, blue, which is the first one, because BGR. Green is number two. Red is uh, number three. And these are, of course, zero base, so zero, one, two. Now, we are going to loop through, I mentioned before it goes rows to columns. So that means columns, which is y, um, is going to be the, the external loop. right? And in, in the inner loop, we're going to loop through uh, the width, right? going